Ah, acceptance. To be included. To be counted. To have favor amongst friends and family. What a wonderful feeling. It has been said that your true friends will be there for you in good times and bad times. To add on to that, despite your mistakes, despite your failings, despite your bad decisions, those who care about you the most will still be there for you. Personally, can you think of anyone who's loyally been there for you despite your shortcomings, despite your mistakes? We have now made it to Jesus' third parable in Luke chapter 15. Now Jesus is still continuing on sharing these parables with the religious leaders of his day. Now each of these parables thus far have taught us something about God's mercy in relation to sinners. Notice how Jesus continues on with this point with a new parable at Luke chapter 15 starting with verse 11. Then Jesus said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that will belong to me. So he divided his assets between them. After a few days, the younger son gathered together all he had and left on a journey to a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth with a wild lifestyle. Then after he had spent everything, a severe famine took place in that country and he began to be in need. It is common for an individual to want to journey off on their own to see what the world is all about. It is also common that an individual may choose to live a life without restraint, to let loose on the morals. Jesus describes the prodigal son as making just that type of choice to live what is described here as a wild lifestyle it says that he squandered everything, but a severe famine struck, and things seemed to go from bad to worse. Notice verse number 15. So he went and worked for one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He was longing to eat the carrot pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Now that's pretty low shows just how substandard his state of living had become. He desired to share a meal alongside pigs. It also shows how distant and alone he must have felt. Notice the expression, no one gave him anything. But life and circumstances have a way of teaching us. Notice how the proverbial light bulb does go off in verse 17. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired workers have food enough to spare? But here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired workers. Yes, in verse 17, he came to his senses. This Coming to his senses has moved him to journey back to his father, which is a sign of repentance, and to confess before him, I have sinned against heaven and you. The expression, I have sinned against heaven, some translations actually say, I have sinned against God. He realized that too, his relationship with his heavenly father was involved, and he wanted to turn around and change his course of conduct. In the beginning of verse 18, the expression is, I will get up. Some translation says, rise. But it denotes the idea of taking action immediately without any further delay. He's made up his mind to return back to his father. But now what is his father's response to the return of his son? Let's notice verse 20. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way from home, his father saw him, and his heart went out to him. He ran and hugged his son and kissed him. Then his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Perhaps 
in reading this, you get the sense of seeing the Father, perhaps standing and looking off into the distance, looking for a glimpse just to catch his son. Maybe he's returning today. And sure enough, he sees him. He sees off in the distance his son returning back. And so once again, the great teacher, Jesus, was using a parable or word pictures to teach those Pharisees and us today something about our Heavenly Father. You see, Jesus was stressing the fact that it is our Father who's good and ready to forgive. It is our Heavenly Father who's abundant in mercy and loving kindness. It is our Father who loved us first. See, Jesus was teaching us that our Heavenly Father is the one who, despite our errors, despite our mistakes, despite our shortcomings, he can see us from a distance, and yet he's got his arms open wide to receive us back. See, that's the Heavenly Father that Jesus is teaching us about. Jesus goes on to express the joy of the Father to see his son return. He goes on to explain, but the father called to his servants, Hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prized calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. The father welcomes back the son with three special articles of clothing, each with their own significant meaning. The robe represents protection and covering. The son would now be clothed with God's love and protection. The ring would represent authority, total restoration. It was common for a slave or a servant to go barefoot, but family members were given shoes or sandals to wear. So by the father giving the younger son shoes or sandals, it was a sign of acceptance into the family. The robe, the ring, and sandals, they all convey dignity in the same way that a pinstripe suit and a silk tie would today. It denotes status. And this was the father's way of letting everyone know that the son had truly been accepted back into the family. This was really a sign of a spiritual resurrection, so to speak. Notice the language in verse 24, the contrast. The son was dead, now he's alive. The son was lost, now he's found. This gives reasons as to why such a celebration should take place. You see, all would take place in this joyous occasion. The, the neighbors, the servants, the slaves, family members, all would take part in this joyous occasion. They would all celebrate. The acceptance of the Father is a demonstration of love and grace and motion. However, not everyone saw this occasion as a reason to celebrate. 